Man, what in the... Greetings, y'all. Canada's Wonderland is dropping nukes. The park has recently announced their new for 2025 roller coaster, Alpen Fury. This will be a premier ride skyrocket model, which is their multi-launch roller coaster. It's going to go through over 1,000 meters of track, which is roughly about 3,200 feet. It's going to travel at speeds of 115 kilometers per hour, which for us in the USA, that's going to translate to about 71.5 miles per hour. Just looking more at the statistics here, I also see that the height of the coaster will be roughly around 164 feet and 152 foot drop, roughly. Uh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't think uh, me and I think a lot of other enthusiasts were not expecting this at all. We knew there was construction going on at Canada's Wonderland. Now, to be fair, I may have just been out of the loop. I haven't been keeping too much progress with the construction going on. I knew that there was. They had removed their Sky Flyer and then there were also had some rolls around Fly. But I didn't think, because having been to the park, that they would connect those two areas, which are quite far apart from each other with one roller coaster this honestly seems quite impressive let alone the fact that they're now adding a fourth roller coaster to their mountain if you've never been to canada's wonderland before they already have three roller coasters attached to their wonder mountain vortex travels up the mountain and then drops off of it then you have Wonder Mountains Guardian, which is on the left side of the mountain if you're facing it from the front of the park. And on the right side of the mountain has been their longest currently operating attraction, Thunder Canyon. So <laughs> the fact that they're adding another roller coaster, this is going to launch up and then go down in, under the mountain, then launch out of the mountain. And where it's going to launch out, I mean, that will be one of the most beautiful views ever because you'll have Vortex dropping off the mountain. You have Wonder Mountain's Guardian dropping down around to go into the mountain. And then this is just coming out of the mountain doing this crazy unique inversion. And wow, holy smokes. Speaking of inversions, this is going to have nine inversions tied for the most in North America. The other one with nine inversions is Steel Curtain at Kennywood. So let's dive into the layout and then I'm just going to finalize my thoughts on this roller coaster. So with the layout, uh, first of all, the station is over by Fly and it's going to make a right turnaround, go into a quick little boost launch with an airtime hill before diving down into the main line. Then it launches down underneath the mountain, it launches up through the mountain into this amazing double inversion. I'm blanking on a name, it's got a brand new name, never done before. It reminds me of the double inversion that is on Max Force, where you kind of bank up, kind of slowly turn and then bank out of it rolling down. And you're gonna do this while over the drop of Vortex, which is absolutely absurd. Then the rest of the layout is basically out and back. It's gonna travel alongside I Street, just behind the trees a little bit as it makes its way all the way to where the Sky Flyer uh, used to be. You drop off, you're going to a bank turn, then crest up because you gotta go over a pathway and when you do that, you're going to do a zero G stall, which is absolutely gonna be beautiful. After that, you go into, once again, it's a new inversion. I apologize for not remembering these names off the top of my head, but basically this looks like a treble clef where you turn up and bank up, but instead of banking outwards and diving down, you go into a rollover. And after that rollover, you go into another inversion. This inversion looks very similar to how you pop out of the mountain, but instead of going in a top hat formation, you kind of just do it as you're going straight out. Uh, once again, very similar. So you roll up and then before you finish, you kind of roll back down. Very similar to the lagoon roll almost. Then afterwards, you got two barrel rolls. They may be corkscrews, but they look more like barrel rolls. The first one, you kind of go up and then you cross over. And then the next one, you go down. Finally, we have an airtime hill. A looks like to be a zero G roll or a barrel roll. And then kind of a double up into the final break run to end out our layout of this insane roller coaster. So... My overall thoughts is, I mean, first of all, what an amazing roller coaster that is going to really be awesome in this insane lineup. Like I mentioned earlier, this is their 19th roller coaster. However, if you've been an enthusiast for a while, you have the top three. 
And then afterwards, you have Vortex is really good. And then you got a lot of hit or miss. You got some good family roller coasters here and there. The park has got done great with that and their kiddie coasters, especially their last kiddie coaster that they built, Snoopy's Racing Railway, which opened in 2023. But there are some, some misses in that lineup, in my opinion. And so this is just going to stack up that lineup even more, and I'm really glad. It is an interesting route. We haven't seen a premier rides coaster of this scale because full throttle, while it's huge, is very short. West Coast Race is on the smaller side, but it has a long layout. It's a lot of fun. I really like that. That's one of my favorite Premier Rides roller coasters. But for the most part, Premier Rides has had a lot of cloned layouts, and most of them are on the shorter side. So it's really cool to see a custom, very long layout that just is packed to the brim with elements and inversions. This looks like to be an awesome ride. I do have two critiques. These are all personal critiques. So my first critique is... I'm not the biggest fan of Premier Rides trains. It is very hard for me to get in. While, while you're on the ride, they are very, very comfortable and they run smoothly on the track. The issue is just getting into the trains. They are so tight from seat to seat that it is very hard to get into. They also have, for safety reasons, there's kind of shelves that you have to climb up over. So I just have never been a fan of Premier Rides trains. Um, one thing that's nice is it seems like this is going to be uh, lap bars only, so there's no comfort collars. Comfort collars haven't been too much of an issue for me personally. They're only annoying when trying to apply them to the lap bar when entering the train. But that's my main critique with this is just the trains itself, at least trying to get in in terms of comfortability. Now, riding the ride, they're fine. It's just entering and exiting that's my issue. The second issue that I have with the ride is its capacity. If you've never been to Canada's Wonderland, you are in shock for how many people come to this park. To give you an example, the last time that I went to Canada's Wonderland was in 2022 in August. On a Monday that we went, it was no different from being crowded as the Saturday and Sunday that we went. Over 40,000 people probably. It was absolutely slammed to the brim with people. It was absurd on a Monday. So that's what I've liked with their recent large scale additions is that they were capacity friendly. B&Ms are very capacity friendly. They have a B&M Giga and Leviathan, Behemoth and a B&M Hyper Roller Coaster. And then Yukon Striker was their last large roller coaster edition in 2019, which also is a capacity machine. I'm a little worried because it seems like there's only two trains. Now, at least these Premier Rides trains have three cars. Most Premier Rides trains have two. A couple do have three. Uh, the SeaWorld Skyrocket 2 models. This one, thankfully, has three. But it's only going to seat 18 people per train. And if there's two trains, I think the theoretical capacity is between 900 and 1,000 riders per hour. And that is my biggest concern is that with the amount of attendance that this park gets, I was hoping for something that could boost capacity a little bit more. So I think that's going to be my only issue for me is that with this ride, especially with its new popularity and what what this ride is going to do, uh, this ride is going to get insane long lines. I hope there's a possibility. It, you can't tell in the animation, but hopefully there's a possibility that that station can be a, a load and unload and potentially have a third train possible but as far as i'm aware right now it only serves two so that's my only critique with it is that capacity wise it seems a little bit on the lackluster side especially for a park Lewis. like once again i said on a monday in august we went here and there's probably we think up to forty thousand people everything was just slammed to the brim with people including their b&m roller coasters which all had full queues spilling out onto the midway but other than that holy smokes canada's wonderland is punching right out of the park i mean this park has been adding roller coasters left and right even though their la their last large roller coaster was 2019 they added a small roller coaster in their planet snoopy section back in 2023 so we knew it was only a matter of time. I guess it's more personally for me, but I thought they're going to remove Time Warp and Flight Deck and then in that section add a B&M Invert. So maybe that's something that they can do in the near future because I think that'd be really cool to have at the park. But besides that, just what they're designing in the layout and what's going on with it, I think it looks cool. Alpen Fury, I think, is absolutely cool of a name. I know a lot of enthusiasts are making a lot of jokes right now, combining Alpen Guy and Fury 325, which is funny. And then I like the color scheme. It, it, it works well. Same colors as Alpen Guys with the white track, blue supports. But, I mean, it makes sense for where this ride is kind of located, going through the mountain, and that's kind of its theme, even though it's going to branch out off the mountain and kind of run along I Street. I like that it's keeping that mountain theme. 
uh, especially since I think that's going to be the key moment is launching through the mountain and in that inversion over top of the mountain. But that's going to do it here, folks. Those are my thoughts, and I want to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. I'm excited to ride this whenever I get the chance, and I hope you guys are too. If you guys did enjoy this video, I'd very much appreciate it if you gave this video a big old thumbs up, as this helps the channel out greatly. And if you find yourself coming back to the channel and you haven't hit subscribe yet, why not? It's just a simple click of the button. I'd very much appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, roller coaster fanatics, keep coasting.